In June 2020, the London Road Safety Council published a new President's Challenge. Nicola Christie, Professor of Transport Safety and the Centre for Transport Studies at UCL, took on the role of President for the charity in July 2019. The LRSC is a unique organisation with both officer and elected member representation from the 33 London local authorities and has representatives from key road safety organisations. Its role is to support the work of the boroughs in their aim to reduce road casualties in Greater London. Setting out the challenge, we recognise that London is beset by unique circumstances. It has a diverse population that is set to increase to 9.3 million by 2021. We agree with Transport for London and call for urgent and continued action to protect vulnerable road users. As data just published shows 54% of all fatalities on the capital's roads in 2019 were pedestrians. As more people travel, it is inevitable that there will be more vehicles on the roads and there will be more demand for goods and services. Without a significant change in focus, this statistic will grow further. Growth in the gig economy and link between work-related casualties. The risks associated with the way people drive or ride for work needs to be addressed at company board level, as all the evidence shows that safety culture starts with leadership. We need to work with these companies to see how they can produce safer working practices. In the City of London Corporation, LRSC member, Chair of the Executive Committee, Alderman Alison Gowman, has already begun by establishing links with the Institute of Couriers. The London Road Safety Council are concerned about those who drive for a living because they're disproportionately seen in the road collision statistics. Our President's Challenge says that we should look at this and based on research data shows that there is this problem with those who are driving for work for whatever reason, due to training, health and safety culture, and conflict with those perhaps who are distracted themselves, pedestrians and cyclists. So this is an issue that we want to address. The London Road Safety Council has a history of working with businesses and organisations. And we're very pleased to say we've set up a new dialogue with the Institute of Couriers. Now this institute represents the courier sector and they're a really important partner to address the issues around drivers at work because they have experience, they're a professional ethical body that represents the businesses. But they also have a road safety message as well and we're very pleased to work with them. Working with organisations like the Institute of Couriers means that we can really have an impact on these areas. And the gig economy is one that we've really highlighted is important. We want to work with businesses that will train their staff and that will ensure that there is a health and safety culture. So we're very pleased that the chairman of the Institute, Carl Lomas, has agreed to join our council and we'll be able to work together to make a big impact on this area. We want to achieve the President's challenge to make road safety an important aim for all. A major concern is that we have a public health crisis with rising levels of obesity and lower levels of mental well-being. The hostile nature of traffic reduces social connectedness and deters walking and cycling. In many London boroughs this autumn, school streets have been introduced to create a safe zone in the road outside the school at the start and finish of the school day. Local authorities can make huge differences in areas like this. I'm at Fry Road, about 200 metres away from the Old Kent Road. Uh, this is a street that if you come here just over a year ago, would have been very difficult to walk around uh, at school dropping off time, which is where we are here. As children arrive at St Francis Primary School, the school approached us as local councillors and said they had huge difficulties here. Uh, problems were that uh, cars would speed up to drop kids off and then speed away parents often that are sort of trying to drop the kids off before getting to work but of course those speeding cars were creating a huge safety problem for children arriving at the school and so Southwark is taking action here to try and improve things. The answer has been to install these bollards to close off the streets. They just raised at dropping off times and then put back down uh, when the school uh, bell rings and then they're put back up again uh, for picking up time. Originally we had temporary barriers, sort of yellow concertina turtle gates that were put out here 
but uh, when the scheme was found to be a success, we made more permanent by having these bollards, which are simply lifted out of the road and installed uh, twice a day. All councils face huge financial pressures now and for the foreseeable future. Southwark has had some of the biggest cuts of any council over the last decade of austerity. That means it becomes harder to find new money for ongoing revenue costs, for road safety measures which involve employing staff. But that doesn't mean we should do nothing. And school streets are a way of funding projects with one of the different council capital programmes where there's usually a bit more flexibility. And they can be done quite cheaply. This is a temporary scheme at Birding Bush Road outside Camelot Primary School, about 100 or so metres from Friary Road. And as you can see, the road has been closed off at two ends outside the school gates, very cheaply using concrete blocks. It's a temporary measure. If it's made permanent, we'll have something nicer in. But it does have a huge advantage is closing this underused street, uh, which could be a nightmare though, at dropping off times to traffic, making it safer, and also creating a good little link between the school and the park across the road. The President's Challenge sets out what we need to be doing to improve road safety for pedestrian cyclists and motorcyclists. What we need to be doing in areas of high social exclusion and deprivation and how we make the money go further in an era of austerity. I'm here at the Old Kent Road, London's A2, one of its most congested roads, huge problems with poor air quality and very big issues about road safety. It's also surrounded by some of the most deprived parts of London. The vast majority of people in this area live in social housing. And that deprivation and those limited life chances are made still worse by poor road safety in the area. I'm also proud to be the person who represents this area as a local councillor. And so I'm really glad that Southwark Council has been able to take steps with its school streets programme to make the area safer for its community. One of the biggest challenges faced by local authorities is a reduction in funding. Public spending cuts over the past 10 years has stemmed the level of road safety activity by boroughs, but it is vital to be alert to opportunities. When TfL announced support for emergency COVID-related transport measures, in South East London, Lewisham Council met the challenge to create one of the first low traffic neighbourhoods at Lee Green. Welcome to, to Lewisham. Um, we're here on Edison Road at Edison Bridge, um, where as you can see behind me, we've got different uh, modal filters that we've put in place um, to stop the vehicles uh, heading through this gap as we've done in many, many spaces um, throughout the borough. Um, underneath the TfL streetscape and um, we've implemented some LTNs across the borough. Um, these have had a great impact um, and we're seeing a reduction in traffic on these roads. There's been a, a real mixed reactions um, to the LTNs. Um, some people have really loved it, they've enjoyed having almost traffic free neighbourhoods. Um, the air quality has been a lot better outside of their properties or their businesses. Um, and on the other hand, we've also had some negative reaction where people have seen traffic build in surrounding roads um, and it's taking journey times longer for people that are not interested in even taking the bus, uh, walking or getting on their bike. Um, as you can see here, um, on the road we've got the different types of uh, stuff that we've put out. It's very colourful, it's very bright. Um, it, it makes the environment around look so much better. Um, and we've got lots of these across our borough. The box is filled up with different plants um, throughout different seasons. Um, and the combination um, that we've taken here using the, the school streets, um, the low traffic neighbourhoods, um, and cycle pathways that have had improvements. Um, it's all part of the bigger package that Lucian were committed to delivering throughout the borough for the residents um, and the people that travel um, through our borough as well to get to their destinations, just to make it a nicer place. We've worked with public health on engagement, trying to get more people walking and cycling. We have a cycle hire scheme um, where people can rent a bike off of us for a month. And if they enjoy the experience at the end of the month, they can buy the bike. Um, if they don't, uh, then they can give it back. And this has been hugely successful um, in getting people out of their cars um, and using more sustainable ways of traveling. The President's Challenge is, of necessity, a dynamic statement. And with an expected tenfold increase in cycling post COVID-19 lockdown, we are aware that whilst more cyclists may mean greater safety, the so-called safety in numbers effect, it is possible that more cyclists may increase cycle to vehicle and cycle to cycle conflicts. In Hounslow, 
The council is supporting a growing league of new cyclists by providing them with loan bikes, road safety training, and by creating organized group rides, targeting especially women from BAME communities. In Hounslow, we've been um, working to make um, cycling more accessible, um, particularly with groups who are underrepresented um, in cycling. Um, in the last four years, uh, we've seen a tenfold increase in the numbers attending our cycle training. Um, and we've done this by taking away many of the initial barriers that, that communities face in accessing training. Um, because of this success, we've now established um, three cycling hubs in different parts of the borough where cycling levels are low. We have achieved this by um, having shipping containers in, in parks um, to store um, the bikes. Um, they've proved to be very secure, um, as well as um, running training from these hubs. We also plan um, regular doctor bikes and a starting point for, for many of our rides. Um, the containers are painted with um, cycling murals, giving um, cycling a huge um, presence in, in the park itself. Our adult cycle training attendees are mostly um, women and from BAME communities. Um, and once they're confident riders, um, we continue to provide um, women only um, weekly uh, rides um, and looking to add more. Um, one of our most um, recent installed container is an all ability hub, giving access to cycling um, for people with disabilities and age related mobility. Um, the hub has a purpose-built cycle track, um, providing a safe and secure place um, for people to learn. Um, we've got a, a, a good selection of adapted bikes. Uh, again, we've been running these sessions uh, weekly uh, and they, they are well attended um, by, by the communities. Um, Hounslow has demonstrated that cycling is for all and, and our cycling uh, delivery plan, including our promotional campaigns, um, do reflect this. Um, please check out uh, and follow us on um, our Facebook page, uh, which is Cycle with Hounslow. And if you'd like to know more about our work or anything about the cycling hubs, um, I know everything about shipping containers, um, please email me uh, fatima.ahmed at hounslow.gov.uk. These examples show just how enthusiastically the aspirations of the President's Challenge are being met by members of the London Road Safety Council. Don't limit your challenges, challenge your limits.